I will read for you a letter from our church council. Dear ILC congregation, greetings from your ILC church council. As you may know, the state has begun allowing counties to transition to phase two of the COVID-19 quarantine reopenings. For churches, this means that congregants can begin returning to in-person services at church facilities. However, there are several burdensome stipulations that come along with the allowed reopening. Rather than make the decision to open or not on our own, we reached out to the congregation with a questionnaire to better understand the congregation's feelings on resuming in-person services. The questionnaire responses clearly, very clearly indicated that the majority of the congregation does not feel comfortable returning to worship immediately. For, for some, the potential health risks were the deciding factor, while for others, the safety regulation seems bothersome and unclear. After considering the potential negative effects of reopening the church now, even with the required preventative measures, we have decided to forego opening ILC doors through the 19th of July. At that time, we will reevaluate and decide to continue the closure or to open up. While we understand that your participation in our church community, including communal worship, is a central part of your life, we ask that you understand that we are placing the health and welfare of each one of our congregants as our church's priority at this time. As we learn more about COVID-19 and the ways to prevent its spread, we will reconsider our position on this matter. The council will remain in contact during this period of quarantine <clears throat> to ensure that we are making the best decisions based upon the most current information. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the meantime, we encourage you to stay connected with ILC by viewing our online content on YouTube and on Facebook, calling a, follow, a fellow congregant, or providing a submission to our newsletter or weekly updates. We also ask that you provide suggestions on how we can better connect, even when we cannot connect in person. The Council has been considering ideas, including drive-by communion and congregation-wide Zoom meetings. We will roll these out as soon as we can to make sure that you are staying engaged. We will, uh, and if you need assistance during this time, or if you just need someone to talk to, please do not hesitate to reach out to us by email or phone. There are several congregation members who have expressed a desire to help those who are hurting during this time, so please do not be afraid to ask. Above all, we want to remind you that we are united under God, and it's through him that we will continue to overcome this enormous challenge. Please keep the ILC community in your thoughts and prayers. Sincerely, ILC Council.
Calm me, O Lord, as you still the storm. Still me, O Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Unfold me, Lord, in your peace. Call me, O Lord, as you still the storm. Still me, O Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Unfold me, Lord, in your peace. The Prayer of the Day. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessing of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Here ends our reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your money or two tunics or sandals or staff, for laborers deserve their food. 
whatever town or village you enter. Find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, you let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. What you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father is speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. I was part of a, a workshop many years ago. It was in St. Louis, Missouri. And it was five days of training, very intensive training, all day long. Um, on small group ministry. And we were assigned to a table. I don't recall the exact number of the people that were in at my table. There might have been oh, seven, perhaps eight people at the table. But after a period of time, we got to know one another. Um, we 
ate with each other at the table. Uh, in the evening, we, we had activities uh, with each other. We got to know each other and we became, well, family of sorts. Interesting how that happens. We bonded by a common experience of being in that workshop, working with each other across the table, uh, asking questions of each other, growing with each other as far as um, uh, the material is involved and how we would respond at the table, the communities, the Christian communities we represented and how this uh, material may be used in that, in that background, that backdrop in those places. So it was trust that was built up. And then, mm, it was day three or four, <laughs> Two of our members were told to go to another table and we would then get two folks from out there, from the other tables, to be a part of our community. It was a grand experiment, experiment to see how this worked about and how that related to small group ministry within the church. You have this group that's met forever, and then you have some new people come in. What happened? Well, with our table, what happened was it, it changed the dynamic of the table. All the bonding that we had among ourselves. Suddenly, there were new people that came in that um, the trust wasn't quite there the same way that we had before. We, we didn't have common history with these new people. And within my own mind, they had to jump through some hoops in order to, for them to gain the trust that we had with the other folks. So they were at a disadvantage. The purpose of this exercise of them, of two people of our group uh, being cast out to another table and us uh, getting two new people at the table was to say that the dynamic of a small group can change with the addition or subtraction of people. But in order for a small group to, to thrive, it needs to be open to the acceptance, the acceptance of new people and to see that as a strength. And these new people coming in are not... Um, um, doing away with uh, something good we've had. They are adding to what we've had. Uh, They're giving us new eyes. They're giving us new perspectives that we would not have had if we didn't have them come. We want new people to come into small groups. It's not a click. It's not a club. It's it should be evolving and moving and growing in that aspect of inviting new people in and having them contribute and giving in ways that uh, you wouldn't have if they weren't there. Looking at the calling of the disciples, well, there were 12. And it names them. There was one betrayer amongst them. And that betrayer, after he passed, he perished, he was replaced. There was a new person that grew, that joined the group. And as a result, I imagine that the dynamic of that group, one leaving and one coming in, changed. It changed how they thought. It changed how they, they worked with one another. If you fully accept someone into your group um, and... and um, appreciate what he or she can bring into the group with their unique gifts and skill sets and allow yourselves to grow from what they bring in instead of dictating what they shall do and not do, then the Holy Spirit can do some surprising good. We have this thing though, it's called clicks. And we have them all throughout our lives. We have a family click. Maybe it's not the whole family. Maybe it's just a selective part of the family that I get along with and exclude those other folks over there. 
We have um, social cliques, uh, just the people that I can relate to well with these habits or customs or personalities. We have political cliques, we know all about those. <laughs> my, my thing is that we, we are so determined by the food we eat. And what I mean by that is where you, what news source you consume. Is that the only reality, the news source that you consume? It, it seems like that is becoming more and more true. I'm so dumbfounded by that. Um, there is a reality outside of each network. <laughs> um, but we become cliquish. And when we become cliquish, we are very resistant to new people joining our group if they be different, if they question if they should bring something uh, new to the order. But God's Holy Spirit is full of surprises. And these folks here, the first calling of the disciples and then the commissioning of them going out and doing their thing, they knew the task, it was to be the Jewish folks, but guess what? There would be Gentiles down the road joining and there would be things and customs that, as Jews, they were so accustomed to doing, and suddenly that is no longer a requirement then for being a follower of Christ. Just when you think our clique has it right, when we can be so self-righteous, when we can say we've got it right and everybody else is wrong, the Holy Spirit may show us Otherwise, I know the Spirit has shown me <laughs> otherwise many times. Just when I thought I knew it all, just when I thought I, I had it all together, uh, just when I thought I, I knew and could uh, navigate certain waters with great skill, the Holy Spirit taught me different. Expect it to happen. Just within our cliques, no matter what clique you have, a family or politics or um, just a certain group you hang out with. God can enter our lives in surprising ways, can send an angel to us unawares. But he, he or she may not look like us, may not talk like us, may not have the right words to say that fit well within our group. But by the Holy Spirit, there are surprises that come our way. And I would pray that our hearts are open to receiving these surprises and a result, as a result to grow. To grow as we are people of grace, that we are people of love, that we are people of acceptance. And when there is a call for the opposite, one must ask, is that from God? Is that from God? And then from there, determine what and who you shall follow. Amen. Please join me in the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with great favor and give you peace. In the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and, say, and serve the Lord. And may you stay safe and well. Blessings to you. Amen.
Oh, 